next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Ryan O'Neill. And glad to have with us in the studio live this morning, Hornell Mayor John Buckley. Mr. Mayor, thanks for coming in. Good morning, Brian. Thanks for having me on. Well, uh, so much going on um, and where to start. Let's talk about this... Um, this new initiative that's coming down, what is it from the state where they want to have all prisoners arraigned in county courts instead of village, city, and town courts? Yeah, well, traditionally uh, we've had arraignments right here in the city of Hornell at the, uh, right at City Hall. And we, we've, we've done arraignments on weekends, on holidays, um, you know, sometimes in the dead of night. And uh, because of a lawsuit, a while back, uh, the state's uh, mandating, or well, they're basically saying that we have to uh, take everyone to Bath. So that means our police department would have to transport these people to Bath to be arraigned. So the person that's being arraigned has a public defender. Um, if if that were to happen, that would cost the city, um, you know, upwards of uh, could, could be between eighty thousand and and a hundred thousand dollars the first year because the, the police department simply isn't equipped uh, from a, a manpower standpoint, uh, from a vehicle standpoint, to, to do these transfers. Now, last year we had uh, approximately, uh, I think it was about two hundred and eighty, maybe a little bit more, two hundred and eighty arraignments in the city of Hornell. So imagine if we had to take all of those people over to Bath. Uh, you know, in the case of a female, or if there's multiple people that we have to take, that's two police officers that we would have to send over to Bath to do these arraignments. And, you know, that's police officers that you're taking off the streets. So, you know, that would leave, uh, leave the city uncovered. Uh, we wouldn't have the, the adequate coverage to respond to motor vehicle accidents. Uh, you know, if there was an incident at any of the school buildings or uh, you know any any domestic calls we, we'd be uh, ill-equipped to handle those because you know if you have two of our police officers that are stuck over in Bath doing these transports um, you know who's gonna cover it's not like the fire department where when there's a fire we can just you know everyone comes in and responds to that we can't uh, because of contractual obligations we can't force overtime on the police department um, so you know it's a it's an ill-conceived uh, idea at the last common council meeting, if you recall, we passed a resolution in opposition to it. I uh, attached a narrative to that uh, resolution, and we sent it out to the governor's office, um, our state senator's office, uh, county officials, and I, I think there was probably 12 or 12 to 15 people that we we sent that out to. Uh, in the meantime, um, the county pulled that pulled the resolution from their last meeting. And, and also, uh, I got notice from Judge Doran, and, and, and this actually, this plan was actually drafted in Judge Doran's uh, office, and I, I talked to him last week, so he, he pumped the brakes on it, and we're actually having a meeting later this morning over in Bath to try to figure a, a you know, a common sense way forward where all the stakeholders, uh, you know, can come to some sort of agreement. And Judge Doran, which court is he? Uh, he, he he's on the, uh, the, the appellate court for the state. Is he Rochester? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, the the inconvenience here uh, would be enormous to the uh, Hornell Police Department. Well, it's twofold. You know, it, it'd be, first of all, it would it would really hit us in the pocketbook. You, you know, you're talking uh, probably eighty to a hundred thousand dollars the first year because we'd have to buy a, a brand new van fully equipped to, just to handle transports. I mean, you know, one vehicle just to handle transports because we can't we can't take you know, three or four people that are being arraigned. Uh, and, I, and I'll just use an example. Uh, over the weekend, we had uh, had that arrest. We had four suspects arrested for dealing drugs on the corner. Uh, they were dealing drugs out of a house on the corner of uh, Genesee and Pearl Street, which is directly across from the Columbian School. So th those four people, if we had to transport them, we couldn't just stuff them in the back of one of our cruisers. We we'd need multiple police cars, if not a van, to do it, which takes multiple police officers. And you take those officers off from the streets. Uh, you know they're not uh, they're not doing the road patrols. They're not uh, you know that's uh, fewer drug investigations that are going on. So it's it, it, it's just not going to work out uh, the way that they intended it to. Not to not to mention the the financial burden that it put on us. Now, um, I think it was uh, from looking at the video on our website of the uh, news story, um, City Attorney Joe Pelch said th 
pretty much realistically this is going to happen whether we want it to or not if it's coming down from the state it's just a matter of when not if well i think it, it, it's going to happen but in what incarnation will it happen is it is it as it was written i don't think so because the having those conversations and over the weekend they've already started pumping the brakes on it so uh, and that's the impetus behind the meeting later today and i'll be in bath later today to discuss with all the different stakeholders and it's going to affect the uh, the city of corning as well uh, and, and i think it'll have the major the, the major impact it'll have on it will be on the city of hornell and the city of corning because we're the two uh the, the two major population centers talking live on the uh, newsmaker show with uh Hornell Mayor John Buckley, elections coming up and uh, on the ballot uh, for Hornell voters, the city chamberlain term of office. Uh, tell us about that. Well, yeah, so on the back of the ballot, there's uh, a proposition to um, change the term of office for the city chamberlain, and, and it's asking to change it from two years to four years. And and, and I know everyone gets caught up in uh, you, you know the governor's race and Congress and and all the uh, uh, you know state senate and assembly and all that. But, but this is very important. So you know I, I ask I ask everyone when you go to vote, uh, just remember to flip the ballot over and and uh, check that proposal on the back. I th I think it's a good idea to go from a, a two-year term to a four-year term for the chamberlain. And, and honestly, I think this is one of those things that should have been done a long time ago. You know, the city chamberlain is uh, basically the CFO of the city, the chief financial officer, if you will, and it's it's a vitally important role. And you know, and, and I'm of the belief, Brian, that you know, when, when you have uh, a position that important that that basically oversees the city finances, that you know, you should have some stability. And you know, I think a two-year term, um, you know, is uh, is a lot to ask for someone to to do that. And uh, you know, Michelle Smith, who um, you know, is a does a fantastic job as our city chamberlain. I I think uh, I think it's you know it'd be in the best interest of city hall, uh, best interest of the voters to make that term a four year term. And and the other thing that it does, and if we do it this year, it would stagger the term of the chamberlain and the term of the mayor. And uh, and being a new mayor, I, I can tell you, uh, you know, I rely heavily on the city chamberlain for um, you know the day to day uh, uh, you know fiscal advice and uh, the fiscal monitoring that goes on. And not only that, but uh, projections and, and forecasting. So, you know, if, if you were ever to have, and we've been fortunate, and this is this hasn't happened, but if, if we were to ever have a new mayor and a new chamberlain come in at the same time. Um, you know that that could be uh, that could be very uh, well. It could be catastrophic because uh, the, the the city chamberlain and the mayor kind of lean on each other, and if you had two new people at the same time, that'd be very very difficult. So I think I think this is a, a common sense thing to do. Uh, St. James Hospital, old St. James, and the new St. James. Let's start out with the uh, new St. James. How are things going with construction? Boy, they're they're just cranking along. Um, you know, if you drive by there, you know, it, it's it looks pretty much finished. At least the the medical village portion of it. Uh, you know, the new building. You know, that that's off a little bit. Uh, but they're having the ribbon cutting coming up later on in November. Uh, very excited about that. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's so many different things they're going to offer up there at the uh, at the medical village, uh, including uh, primary care, specialty care, uh, urgent care, lab, imaging, uh, physical and occupational therapy. So you know, they're they're covering it across the board. Very excited. I've been meeting regularly with Brian O'Donovan, the new CEO of St. James, and and we're we're in talks. Uh, you know, every every other week, if not every week. Uh, so very excited. Uh, it's a, it's a great thing for our community, great thing for the area. Uh, just so happy to to have that uh, uh, that that old plaza. That you know how how many how many times we drive by that over the years and think think to ourselves, boy, what, what's ever going to happen to this plaza? Is, is anyone ever going to go in there? Will it ever come back to life? And what a, what a perfect spot it, it was for the medical village and the new hospital. How about the old St. James building, uh, which is still being used, obviously, but when uh, it's emptied out, uh, any anything there? Well, I've actually been in discussions with Trinity. So for those of you that, that don't know, St. James does not own that building. Trinity actually owns the building, and uh, St. James is a, is a tenant. So once St. James is no longer there, the question becomes, what happens to the old building? Well, 
I've been in discussions with them, and uh, you know, n n no definitive decision has been made, but we're we're having discussions, and uh, and and I, I made it very clear to Trinity that I don't want an empty building sitting there in the future. So uh, there, there, there's going to be something that's going to happen there, whether uh, you know whether they try to lease it out, whether they try to sell it, or even uh, or, or even demolish it. Uh, you know, all all things are on the table right now. Uh, you know, if we were ever to demolish that building, if or if Trinity were to, you know, that's a lot of land that could be developed. So there, there's a lot of different options there, Brian. But we we are having those discussions, and it's not uh, not something that I'm going to let fall on the wayside. Talking live this morning with Hornell Mayor John Buckley, we're going to talk about the upcoming election when we get back, and the Arrigo Bear Burns situation, the. Reed Matrano race, the O'Mara Kurskisner race, and the Molinero Cuomo race. Stay with us. Earning and keeping your trust is a priority for all of us at Countryside Propane. That's why you'll always receive outstanding service from knowledgeable professionals with reliable installation and delivery, friendly customer support, and fair pricing you can always depend on. It's why our customers say, it's so nice to finally find a propane company I can trust. Switch to Countryside Propane today. Lock in a low price and start saving hundreds right away. Visit countryside-propane.com and get started. Want your vehicle looking just like it did when you drove it out of the dealership? Then stop by RBS Auto Detailing on Canisteo and Pine Streets in Hornell. RBS Auto Detailing. The before and after photos of your vehicle won't come close to showing the great job they'll do for you. Cleaning, washing, and waxing. They can get your vehicle looking nice and new both inside and out. RBS Auto Detailing on the corner of Canisteo and Pine Streets in Hornell. Checking in now with meteorologist Rob Carolyn, who says it's going to be a pretty wet Halloween. Yeah, it does. It does look like uh, the trick-or-treaters not only going to need their costumes on Wednesday, Brian, but umbrella as well. Uh, we've kind of entered a fairly active weather pattern. We've got uh, one area of low pressure moving away from the northeast this morning. Uh, another frontal boundary, which is moving through the Dakotas, that's going to start to impact the area by Halloween, Wednesday. And it looks like uh, that system is going to kind of move through very slowly. So we'll continue to deal with uh, showers Thursday and Friday before it starts to improve as we head into the first weekend in November. And speaking of the first weekend in November, this Sunday we go back to uh, from daylight savings time to standard time. It's already that time of year. So if you think the sun is setting early now, just wait uh, from a week from now. We've got some showers out there this morning. They will gradually come to an end. Lingering cloudiness this afternoon. Cool temperatures are going to hold between 40 and 45. Sun came up this morning at 741. It will set tonight at 607. Tonight, lots of clouds, lows overnight 30 to 35. Improving tomorrow, it should become mostly sunny, milder too, 50 to 55. Next front heads our way tomorrow night. Clouds, a few showers arrive late, 40 to 45. And we'll have scattered showers during the day Wednesday. Highs will be 55 to 60, Brian. Thank you, Rob. Back with uh, Hornell Mayor John Buckley. Uh, let's start with the uh, Arrigo Bear Burns situation. Well, you know, that race is uh, kind of a mess, in my opinion. Um, you know, Assemblyman Arrigo, obviously we all know that he was indicted um, by the FBI for taking a bribe and, and wire fraud. And, you know, and I, 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 I mentioned this at the last council meeting right at the end, Brian, and, you know, my profound disappointment in Assemblyman Arrigo. Uh, you know, especially at that stage of his career, I, I just, you know, trying to wrap my head around why he would do something like that. And, uh you know, it's, it's very unfortunate, and, and there's no excuse for it. Uh, you know, to to betray the public trust the way he did, uh, especially on the heels of his predecessor, uh, basically doing the same thing, although uh, to a different extent. Uh, you know, and, and we have a, uh, and unfortunately, we have a history uh, in New York State uh, with corrupt politicians. Uh, you know, taking bribes and. Uh, between the public trust, and that, that goes right right to the top with Sheldon Silver, the leader, the former leader of the Assembly, uh, who was a, a Democrat. Uh, Dean Skelos, the former leader of the State Senate, who was a Republican. Um, you know, and, and it's touched. This isn't the first time it's touched Tornell. Uh, you know, if you go back some years with Eric Massa, he he left in disgrace. And uh, you know, it's it's we we deserve better. You know, as a people, as as residents of the the city, as residents in the district, as residents of the of New York State, we, we deserve better. We deserve people with integrity. Um, you know, that aren't going to do these sorts of things. Uh, you know, get, getting back to the the race itself. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, it's too late in the game to get 
your name off the ballot, so uh, Arrigo's name will remain on there. But you know, you, you look down at the other options, and you have uh, Marjorie Burns, who who last time I checked was still under investigation by the Attorney General's office for uh, paying twenty thousand dollars to Jason McGuire, the Conservative Party chairman over in Livingston, and 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 basically. Uh, basically, what the report says is she paid uh, twenty thousand dollars to him, uh, basically to get the party line, to get her name on the on the ballot on the conservative line. And uh, you know, she sends uh, or well, Jason actually, Jason McGuire paid the money back, but then Burns said, "Well, there's you know, we we didn't do anything wrong." But my question is, well, if you didn't do anything wrong, why'd you pay the money back? Um, so you know that that race is a mess. Uh, you know Barbara Bear, the the, the Democrat. Uh, you know I, I I've never met her. She seems like a nice lady. Uh, obviously, uh, you know I, I would have a lot of policy differences with her. But you know if, if you're a, a Republican or a conservative or uh, you know a right of center voter in this race, I you know I, I'm sorry I don't really have any uh, any suggestions for you. I'm not sure where to go with that one because. Uh, like I said, <laughs> we, we deserve better. Um, you know, some of the other races, I think, uh, I think are more cut and dry. Um, well, let's talk some of those. Uh, Tom Reed, Tracy Matrano, the congressional race. Yeah. So, so Reed and Matrano, um, you know, I, I think there's a, a very stark contrast right there. Uh, you know, Congressman Reed, you know, he he endorses the you know the policies that have been. Uh, been implemented over the last few years that, that's basically revived the economy. I mean, you know, look, look at the economy as a whole. You know, the stock market's going through the roof. Uh, GDP growth is up 3.5 this quarter. It was up 4.2 the last quarter. Consumer confidence is off the charts. Unemployment is, is falling and falling. And that's all due to uh, you know, tax cuts and the, the cutting of regulation, and all of which Congressman Reed supports. And you know, for me, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You know, why? If you look at the economy and look at the jobs, and people have more money in their pockets. The economy is basically on fire right now. Why would you want to change it? Why would anyone want to change that? And I, and I would say, you know, if if we went back a couple of years before that last presidential election, and and every everyone basically took a long nap and woke up two years later, and we said, "Hey, this is this is what the economy is going to look like." But no one knew who the winner of the president, the presidential election was. They would everyone would think, "Wow, whoever it is is doing a fantastic job." But because we're so polarized as a nation, people can't see through it, and and they're just uh, a lot of people just kind of uh, let their emotions get the better of them. But uh, you know, I think Congressman Reed, uh, you know, not not just on a uh, you know on the national stage, but just more locally, he's a huge advocate for St. James. I remember when St. James was on the brink of closing their doors, uh, and I live right across the street from the hospital. I remember coming home from work and seeing Congressman Reed leaving the hospital, uh, you know, having those meetings, and he was there. He was there, Brian, uh, you know, right, right in the thick of it. And uh, he's a he's been a staunch advocate for health care in our area. He's been a, a staunch advocate for for uh, business in our area, large and small. Uh, just a few months ago, he held a, a job summit at Alstom, which was heavily attended. So you know, he he's been there for us. Uh, you know, he's he's got my full support. The state Senate race between uh, Senator O'Mara and Amanda Kerskisner. Yeah, and again, you know, Senator O'Mara has been uh, a, a tremendous advocate for us right here in the city of Hornell. Uh, he provided uh, a half million dollars for the ladder truck that the that the fire department uh, sorely needed. Uh, you know, he's he's provided bullet aid for the schools. Uh, you know, bailing out some sports programs some years ago. Uh, you know, he, he's just been a tremendous advocate and, and continues to be. And uh, uh, Senator Romero will actually be in Hornell tonight at the uh, candlelight vigil that Concern for Youth is putting on in front of Steuben Trust. Um, so, you know, again, uh, for me, that, that, that's an easy choice. Um, you know, his, his opponent, uh, you know, I, I've, I've watched a couple of interviews that she's been in, and she's kind of all over the charts on things. And uh, you know it's kind of kind of kind of hard to make sense of some of her interviews. I know she's not a polished uh, politician, and the, you know, and it's not to say that you know one needs to be a, p a polished politician. You don't, um, but I, I think there's a lot of inconsistencies in in her answers to questions. A lot of inconsistencies in her policy positions. 
um, you know, just kind of makes you uh, makes you wonder where she's coming from. But you know, again, when you have when you have good people in in positions, um, you want to hang on to those people. And and Senator Tom O'Mara has been a, a great advocate for the city of Hornell and his entire district. Down to 45 seconds, uh, Mark Molinaro and Governor Cuomo. Uh, you know, tough race. Uh, yeah, I feel bad for Molinaro because I think the I think the the climate was ripe for a win there. But unfortunately, uh, the lib- with the Libertarian in the race, I think the Libertarian and the Republican candidates will are fighting for the same votes, and uh, um, and they probably won't be successful. We've been talking with uh, Hornell Mayor John Buckley, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Brian. Appreciate it. You have a great day.